We took the overland train to Bethnal Green to go to Ed's studio at Acne, where he's been since 2008. I met Ed 30 years ago in Cardiff at art school, where he said it would fine art and I said it's ceramics. We're both fascinated by public spaces. I make street art and Ed paints the street and street life, and I make stuff for stations. Train stations are great places. Yeah, they, they are. The they really are. The greetings yeah. and, aer and airports, the yeah. hellos, the goodbyes, yeah, yeah. the stories that you can Definitely. imagine. Yeah, they're emotional centres. So you love drawing busy places, markets, scenes, marches, yeah. and um, all kinds of commuters and all kinds of things in different places of London. You specialise in London. Yeah. North, south, east, west, yeah? Uh, yeah. And yeah. other cities, what are the other cities that you covered? Uh, well, none in, none in this country, unfortunately. I, I think London is, because it's my home, you know, I, I've grown oh, yeah. up here. And, born and bred you know, born London. Yeah, so I, you know, I love, I, 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 I lo I, what I love is the, the way that my relationship with the city changes over time as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, this is very, it's, although it's, it's work about it's social commentary, it's, it's also work about my relationship with the city. Um, and I think over, over the years I've just got more confident about being able to stand there and, and sketch really, you know. It's about finding a place that doesn't interfere with the scene that you're drawing, it's about not being threatening, it's about being open to, to people that come to talk to you and show them that you're drawing. And, and I don't take photographs, you know. I, I, I draw the people that I see. You don't take photographs as backup at all? I take, or? I take, I take photographs of, of buildings, but I don't take photographs of, of people. So all the people in all your paintings you've drawn and observed? Yeah, yeah, yeah everything. That's my, that's, my kind of, that's my rule of, of the way that I do things, is just to show up as many times as I can until I understand what it is that I'm trying to paint about and how I can do it and, and who's going to be in it. You know, who are the people that go to that place and why are they there? And, what do they do? What are the really on a deeper level? I'm looking for the rhythms of those places. Really, it's the visual rhythms, the patterns of people, the way people, you know, in a market like in, in Whitechapel, the way people kind of go through that space and move around it and interact with each other, or the way they don't. You know, the, the, the sort of the you know what perhaps the the kind of spaces between people. You know, they're, they're the things that I'm interested in as well. You know, the, the, the kind of the way people... It's, got, it's like the choreography of the street. You know, I, I really like that phrase. People want to talk to you, people want to tell them stories. So, you know, that, that was a really interesting... How do you point. feel when someone comes up to you and starts chatting to you when you're in the middle of trying to capture something? <laughs> Sometimes I wear headphones. And, uh, and so, although I don't listen to music when I'm, when I'm drawing, only when I'm in the studio, but because I want to hear what people say. Uh, but so I put headphones on and people tend to leave me alone but, but then other times that I, I just welcome people are really interested and they want to know what I'm doing and they also want to tell their story you know. So has anyone ever come up to you and said oh my god I saw myself that vomiting person on the night bus that was yes. me. Yeah yeah yeah. So this, this is a, a print of the, of the painting where, where that first happened where people recognise themselves so, so this is a print on canvas and, and there was this pub that I used to go to a lot in Brixton and this this fight broke out one night. It was a bit of a rough and ready pub. It's still there. It's the same with, with, with your work in the streets, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's very public. So the response, I mean, I know people that, that know me, that don't know you, that said to me, you know, this, this person's work is amazing, you know, so in that, that's like, oh, that's my friend Ward, you know, and it's, it's it's an amazing yeah, we get sent selfies and people yeah. or see people. Oh, they're sure. living, you know, looking at the, the kids. And they have ownership of it. Yes. So you specialise in very large paintings. Yeah. I mean, are they paintings? <laughs> yeah, they, these are originals. So this is, these are originals. Yeah, it's all wrapped up ready for the show. Did you did you go and put? I was standing there drawing. Yeah. No way. Yeah, but a bit earlier on. This this painting about the football is very much about identity. So what happens is, th these are my sketches from my sketchbook and then I'll, I'll, I'll sort of chop up the sketchbook and gather things together and sort of see what I can remember from the scene. So I'm, try I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to use my, the memories of what I was feeling at the time, the memories of the people. And then I, I work on the painting with chalk, chalk and charcoal and I draw it out and move people around. and. Um, that process takes takes a few weeks really to get people into they sort of fall into a position that, that fits you know fits with who I remember them being but also fits with the painting. How so, many times can you move someone? Uh, 
quite a lot. I mean, some of the paintings don't work because because I put so much paint on and take it off that the canvas kind of gets gets ripped really. So how exciting is it when it all starts coming it's, together? It's, it's amazing. You know, it takes a long time for that to happen. That may only be the last couple of weeks that you're working on something, but it's like it's it's you're just buzzing really because you, you you know your your kind of your mind is totally free. And it's a bit like meditation. You know, you kind you're just lost in in, in the work so much. So, yeah, there's a massive. You know, Similarity between meditation and, and, and creation. When, it, when you're in the creative zone, it's yeah. you're, you're you're gone and yeah. that's it. You're yeah. in there. Well, um, you're playing, you know, yeah. and, and, and you're totally free, and you know, and that and that's you know that's why I, I do this really for those moments. You know, the rest of the time is like it's it's hard work. You know, like 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 most jobs, it's really difficult. But you know, it, it then there's moments when it when it kind of starts to come true and it starts to happen and feels alive. Oh, I can imagine because it's very different when you're kind of just getting on and processing and moving people around or when I'm making clay things or yeah. and it's kind of a process but when something really works and I think my favourite part of the process is when I get all the tiles out of the glaze firing and get yeah. them out on the drawing and start putting them down and then suddenly you get a really good exciting an idea comes that you yeah. just didn't think was oh, you never thought of and yeah. that's such a yeah. exciting yeah yeah, yeah. Feeling, absolutely, and, and I think what it is is, is that you real for me. I, I realised why I wanted what, what the painting is about. Mm. Why I wanted to make this painting. Mm. Most of the time, I don't really understand why I want to paint something. Mm. I just think an area or a, or an event or a time of day or the light looks interesting or I've seen someone that I thought that person looks quite interesting mm. and they fit into that painting in that place. I can create something about that. And then over time, you start to think, I know what this painting is mm. about. You know. I understand something deeper than, than, than what I started off doing, you know. Ed was preparing for his Spitalfields exhibition when we went to visit him, and he was on Robert Elms, BBC London, talking about his work. Robert Elms said about Ed's paintings that they are not still lives, but motion pictures. They are musicals, buzzing with jazz and the glorious accidental choreography of crowds. Ed is fascinated by the city being like a vessel that all human life pours through, People uproot their lives to seek something better in cities and have done so for generations. You then have prints people can buy as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So have you got prints of every single painting you've ever sold? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. yeah and people can buy them from you. Them on the website. So Ed, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, and I think yeah. would be interesting for viewers, is what tip would you give to anybody young starting out in the art world? I think, I think the, the, the thing I would say is it's an amazing adventure. It's an amazing journey. I think you know that journey to through art college. Although these days it's 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 not as accessible to as many people as it was when we went. You know, uh, I I really hope that doesn't put people off because you know art college just opens your mind to so many people, so many ideas. It challenges everything you, you thought you knew. So that's know, but imagine borrowing thirty five grand for it. No, I know. Right? Really, I've been yeah, able to do it. Absolutely. You know, that, and that's that's it's a scandal really because it's going to seriously damage, you know, the the, the cultural life of this country. Which is a years, huge so. income, which is a really important yeah. massive part of our GDP, isn't it? Absolutely. It makes no sense at all. So you know, somehow if you get to art college, that's that's an amazing achievement in itself. You know, getting out of art college, I think the thing to do. Is to is to really think very seriously about how you can keep going, you know. Like whether it's just with a sketchbook, you know, you don't have to have a studio. I'm very lucky to be to be able to, you know. I, I don't always make the payments for the rent on time, but I've kept the studio for, for 20 years, you know. So longer than that. When I was starting out, I, I worked in a squat. Not so many of them around, but um, you know, I, I contacted schools so I could I could work in a school building, you know, as a as a resident artist. You know, um, you know, in a, in a small space that I could have. And you found other ways to earn money along the side. Other way, loads of other jobs. You know, I've been loads of jobs. You know, I worked as a, a guard in a natural history museum in the end because it was just something that was so low key that it just let me have energy in the evening so I could then go and paint. So, you know, any way that you can keep going for a few years until you start to kind of your ideas become more sort of concrete and you start to meet people that can help you and you know. I think I think that's that's just those first few years are, are really crucial, really, because you lose you, you leave that kind of cocoon of art college and you're you're on your own in, in the world, and that's that's a pretty tough thing. And a lot of people they don't walk away from creativity, but they walk away from 
earning their living from it, you know, because it's too hard, and, and that's you know that's a difficult thing. But but if, if you can get through those first few years and try and exhibit, if you're a painter, that's my experience. You know, wherever you can, you can exhibit. It's 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 quite. That's not a, a, that much of a difficult mm. thing. Making the right decisions, valuing what you do. Well, making the right decisions is hard because at the, at the yeah. time you don't know if they're right or no, wrong. No, you don't. But just keep yeah. trying, yeah, keep yeah. making decisions, keep yeah. trying things. That's right. Yeah, making the right decisions is the wrong phrase. Making decisions <laughs> and, and making the wrong decisions helps yeah. make the right. Yeah, decisions. making mistakes is part yeah, of it. Yeah, definitely. And then, and then you know when you when you when you have your exhibition, valuing what you do. You know, how do you work out what to charge for something? You know, you've got to be realistic. What are people are going to pay for it when you're just starting out. Just try and believe in what you're doing. Yeah. You know, we need good. artists. Yeah, of course we do. Of course we do.